Hey there, if you're watching this, it means you already know what XAMPP is and how to use it. You also know that there isn't an out-of-the-box feature in XAMPP that allows you to switch between multiple PHP versions. By the end of this video, you are going to find out everything you need to know to install multiple PHP versions in XAMPP. So let's get started. For this video, I'm going to use XAMPP 324, which is an older version that comes with PHP 7.4.4. Additionally, I would assume you already have a working version of PHP and some script files or a project you can use throughout the tutorial. Alright, it's time to download a new PHP version. Whenever I want to download a PHP version, I choose this website called windows.php.net. I'll leave a link in the show notes. Let's download the latest version. At the time of this recording, the latest version is PHP. 817. There are a couple of things you have to be aware of here. The NTS and TS version, which stands for non thread safe and thread safe, and the 64 and 86 CPU architecture. Most PCs nowadays have a 64 bit operating system and base processor, but if you're not sure about it, you can check out the About Your PC section in Windows. Now, coming back to non-thread safe and thread safe versions. Before downloading any versions, I would advise you to check if you have thread safety enabled in your current PHP installation. If you already have a working PHP file or a project, you can go to that script file or inside your public slash index.php and use the PHP info function. If you have thread safety enabled, then you should download the PHP version that doesn't contain NTS in its name. And of course, the opposite, if you have non-thread safety, you should download the version that contains NTS in its name. If you download the wrong version, you may end up having problems with PHP and PHP extensions. Once the download finishes, go to XAMPP folder and create a new PHP folder. I will name it PHP 817 because it will contain PHP 817 version. I strongly advise you also use the same folder naming approach to make it easier for you later. Now open the archive you've just downloaded and extract everything in this folder. In the same folder, locate the php ini development file, copy it, paste it, and rename it to php.ini. Open the php.ini file and search for extension dir. Remove the semicolon to activate this option. And this is the directory in which the PHP extensions such as curl, FTP, and MySQL are located. Next up, search for curl. And from here, you can remove the semicolon for any extensions you'd like, um, such as uh, curl, FTP, file info, MySQL, MySQLite, and, and so on. So let's do that now. Um, all right, so of course, it depends very much on the project and yours may have a different extension dependencies. Um, a quick note about these extensions is that if you're trying to set up a PHP version lower than 5.6, the name of the extensions would have the suffix PHP underscore the name of the extension and dot dll so make sure you uh, have the correct name of the extension if you already have a working php version then most probably the windows environment variable is already set for php and you can skip this step to check what version of php you have installed open the command prompt and type in php-v 
Mine is 744 because this is a default version that comes off the box with XAMPP. Additionally, to check where PHP is installed, you can use the following command where PHP. And as you can see, that is the default folder in XAMPP. If you don't have any PHP versions installed, but you do have a XAMPP installation, press the Windows button on your keyboard, then go to Environment Variables. Then under the System Variables, go to Path and then Edit. Then click New and add the path to your PHP folder. Mine is this one. Click OK, OK. To check if the environment variable is working, close all command prompts and open a new one. And type php-v. And if you also want to do where php to see the folder, it's fine. And if everything looks good, it's time to move on to the next section. Now we have to let Apache know that we have a new PHP version ready to be used. Go to XAMPP, Apache, Conf, Extra, and open the httpd-xamp file. And anywhere in this file, I prefer to do it at the end of it, um, paste this chunk of code. This basically tells Apache where to find this specific PHP version. If you've been following the same naming convention as I recommended, then replace my um, PHP 817 with the PHP version. Also, this code will be posted in a gist, so check it out uh, in the show notes. Next, we have to tell Apache that for a certain project, we want to use a specific PHP version. In the same file, add the following piece of code. Um, Varen is um, the name of my project and as before, don't forget to update the path and the PHP version to fit your needs. Uh, before we try out the new version, we have to restart Apache for the changes to take effect. Now we can go back to our index.php file and check out the PHP for settings. And as you can see, now we have the PHP version of 8.1.7 and everything is ready to go. All right, that was it. If you want to install any other PHP versions, you can redo all the steps the same way. If you like this video, stick around this channel because I will post more free resources like this one. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where I also share web development and other geeky stuff. I was Carol, and I'll see you in the next one.